So now we have these super cool animations, but right now our player can just fly off into the orbit because we can uh, press the jump button down over and over again and every time we uh, apply this Y velocity. In this part we want to uh, get rid of this so that our player can only jump after we have hit the ground. So let's do this. Now one option to handle this would be to check for a collision between the player and the terrain. Because both the player and the terrain have a collider applied to it and we could check if they collide and then say okay we are grounded and then we can jump again. But the problem with this approach is that this will also detect a collision if we are on the edges for example on the right or left side. Okay no this is left and this is right. If we touch the sides or even the bottom of our platform we can also jump because it's a collision. Instead we will use a different approach that is slightly more complicated but it works and it's also not a lot of code. It's actually just one line that checks for the grounding. So let's go back into uh, our player movement script in Visual Studio and add this here. What we do is we create a separate method for it. Private and it has to return a boolean because this method decides if we are grounded, so if we are standing on the ground or not. If we are standing on the ground it will return true and if we call it while we are in the air it will return false. So the return type of this method is not void, it's bool. And we give it a name, let's call it is grounded. But for our approach here we still need a reference to the box collider of our player. And we already know how this works. We create a variable for it. Let's put it here at the top. I put it below the rigid body. Private box collider 2D. And let's call it short call. We assign our new friend call in start with get component. And then we can use it in our code. Back down in is grounded. We do a so called box cast. Now, first of all, let's write out the whole code and then we go through it and I explain what it actually does. So here we write physics to d dot box cast parentheses. And this expects several arguments. The first one is the center of our box collider. So we write call dot bounce dot center. The second argument is the size of our box collider. So again call dot bounce dot size this time. For the angle we pass zero as a float. For the direction we pass vector dot down and again I will explain this in a moment. For the distance we pass 0.1f and we will pass the last argument in a moment. Now I'm not 100% sure that I understand box cast correctly myself but I'm actually pretty confident. What we basically do is we create a box around our player that has the same shape as the box collider so as this little green rectangle you can see here. We create another box like this. This is what these two arguments here are for, the center and the size of our box collider. It positions this second box over it basically. Now this zero is just a rotation, it doesn't matter here because we don't want to ro rotate anything. And vector 2 dot down and this 1.f moves this box down just a tiny little bit. So instead of this green box here, you can imagine the other box just being offset a little bit downwards. And why is this useful? Because now we can use this other box to check if something overlaps with it. So if we are standing on the ground and our new box cast is slightly below our collider, then the box cast will overlap with the ground. We can detect this and then we know that we are standing on the ground. But since we don't move our new box to the right or to the left, we won't detect any overlap with the right and left sides of the terrain. So this way we don't have this problem that we can jump when we are slightly when we are touching the walls of the terrain. 
But now we still have to check what our box cast is overlapping with, because we only want to be able to jump when we are on the ground, right? We don't want to be able to jump when we hit an item, for example, that is floating in the air. So this is pretty simple. We just go to our terrain object and we want to apply a layer to it because we can check for this layer and then make a decision depending on it. At the moment, the layer is set to default. When we click on it, we can create our own layer. When we click on add layer. Let's use the user layer six here and call it ground. Then we click on our terrain again and we set the layer to ground. We want to pass this ground to our player movement script so we can use it in our box cast. So back into our script, we create a variable for it with a serialized field so we can pass it in the editor. I'm going to put it here, but again, you can put it below or above, doesn't matter. So angle brackets, serialized field, private, and when we want to pass a layer, we declare the type as a layer mask. And let's call the variable jumpable ground. We assign this later in the editor. And then we pass this jumpable ground as the last argument to our box cast. So now it checks if we are overlapping this jumpable ground. And the box cast method itself returns a boolean. So if we are overlapping this ground, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. So we can just add return in front of it and return it from our own method. So now whenever we call is grounded, it will execute this box cast and then return true or false depending if we are touching the ground or not. And again, you can imagine this just like a little box we are creating, which we move down by a tiny little bit and then we check if this box is overlapping with the ground. And then we want to call this method when we press the jump button. So we scroll up. Here we have if input get button down jump. After jump between the two closing parentheses, we write two ampersand signs, which is a logical end, which means that only if this condition is true, but also the condition that we put to the right side of it is true, only then the if block will be executed. If either of these two conditions is false, it will not be executed. And you can already imagine what we put in here. We simply call our isGrounded method, which will return true or false. And earlier I showed you how you can get to the documentation of a component directly in Unity by clicking on this little question mark here. We have some similar functionality here for methods in Visual Studio. What we can do is we can click, for example, on BoxCast with our mouse cursor. And then if everything is set up in your Visual Studio correctly, you can press Control Alt M on Windows and then immediately press Control H afterwards and it should open the web browser with the documentation for this method. But again, documentation tends to be really complicated, so don't get scared by this, but it's a useful shortcut because then you don't have to type it into Google manually. Okay, let's not forget to save our script and then let's see if this works. Run our game. I know we should only be able to jump when we hit the ground. We are not jumping at all right now, because we have forgotten to set the layer mask attribute on the player. So we click on player, scroll down to our player movement script, and here jumpable ground, we can now select a layer for which we select ground. Let's try it again. And we can jump, and we cannot jump anymore while we are in the air. That's great. And we cannot jump while we are on the sides of our platform here, we can't jump. But we can stick to it, which is a different bug that we will take care of now. This one is much easier because there's a ready-made component that takes care of this. We go to our terrain. We add a new component to it. And this one is called Platform Effector 2D. We add this. We uh, Untick use one way because this is some other stuff where you can jump through platforms from the bottom. We don't need this here. And then we go to our composite collider and tick used by effector, which gets us rid of this warning. Let's try it again. And now it should work properly. 
Now when we touch the sides of our platform, we slide right off and we also can jump while we are not grounded. Okay, great. That's it for this part. If you feel that this was very difficult, don't worry, in my opinion, the most difficult part of this tutorial is over. The rest is basically just applying what we already know in different forms. And in the next part, we will learn how to add collectible items to our level, which is really cool. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this tutorial, like the video, and then we see us in the next part. Take care.